Hi, Joel. How are you doing? Good, Deborah. How are you today? I'm good. So Tidewater Renewables is a multifaceted energy transition company created to meet the growing demand for renewable fuels in North America. The corporation is focused on efficiently turning renewable feedstocks into low carbon fuels, including renewable diesel, renewable hydrogen, and re renewable natural gas, as well as carbon capture through future initiatives. Sorry, a bit of a mouthful there. Nice to see you. It's been a few years. I think the last time I saw you was uh, when I worked at Beacon and you were walking around with uh, Tidewater Midstream. Oh, thanks for having us, Deborah. It's been yeah. an interesting time. Thank you. Looking forward to getting an update and hearing all about your uh, renewables company. Great. Right on. So what is, should I share my screen, Deborah? What's the best yeah. point? To talk? Yeah, if you want to share a screen and, and walk through, you've got about 20 minutes. Okay. Sounds good. We can get going. And I apologize if I'm not the, the best on, on the, the stick with the IT, but we can get going. We're excited with what we're doing here within in Tidewater Renewables. For those of you that don't know the story, we... We IPO'd our renewables business back in the summer. It was great to bring in 160 million of capital uh, to to progress our, our renewables. We our parent company Tidewater Midstream does own 69% of uh, Tidewater Renewables. You'll see our market caps in the 450 to 500 million dollar range. And then uh, as we build out a renewable diesel project, our debt now is approaching approximately $100 million as we have one large project in our renewable diesel project, which we're, we're excited to walk everyone through. I think a key, few key initial points would be base contracted EBITDA. So we have base contracted EBITDA on 10 to 15 year contracts, some 40 to 45 million. And then you'll see our recent Q1, we were roughly at about 50 million of run rate EBITDA. Our Q2, we continue to see uh, outperformance, I'd say, even into 2023. So nice to have. I'd say we're, we're one of probably a few renewables entities with material cash flow and adjusted EBITDA and, and great to have our business outperforming. Where today, we're, we're, we're well ahead of our, our Q1 run rate of 50-ish million of, of EBITDA. And we'll walk you through what's driving that. Some of that is our canola co-processing or diesel prices have been strong uh, of late and also BC low carbon fuel standard credit prices have, have also been, been strong. So great to have a, a strong base business. Um, and really the reason for the IPO was to fund initially our renewable diesel project. So we'll, we'll walk you through that project as well. Um, but we're fully funded on a renewable diesel project. It's about eight months uh, out, remain on time and on budget. And uh, it's approximately an incremental $100 million of EBITDA. So today we're in that 50 to $60 million range. Renewable diesel will add 100. We'll be at that 150 to $160 million of EBITDA here in the next eight, nine, 10 months, which is quite exciting for us. And then today we'd have about $100 million of, of debt as we ramp up the construction of the project. Uh, with our $150 million facility. Um, next slide here, we get into it to our RNG partnership and project, which we're, we're, we're really excited about. We have partnered with what we feel is the premier cattle entity in Canada, and some would say within North America, the largest marketer of cattle in all of Canada and top five within the US. So we partnered with them on both feedstock of tallow to our renewable diesel, and then also on RNG where we have commenced permitting and construction here shortly on our first um, RNG project with, with them, which will be a, a large beef feedlot. They do have operations through Nebraska, uh, California, Texas, Iowa, New Mexico, but are initially from Albertans as, as we are and have three or four potential RNG projects here in Alberta, where they've also received material government support and and in for and, and Mr. Brockby were very helpful in in pulling this partnership together, which we're real excited about longer term. So I'll probably jump through some of the, the details in the interest of time as I'll I'll make sure I keep us on on track here. But again, main reasons for the recent partnership was feedstocks with towel supply for a renewable diesel and potential sustainable aviation fuel. And then also our first RNG project with an incredible partner and what do plan to have a 20-year offtake with an investment grade counterparty. So excited to build out our RNG side of the business. For those of you that don't know us, we are parent companies, a gas processing entity with a refinery, uh, but definitely have a lot of knowledge on sour gas processing with our 400 plus employees 
in our parent company and marketing gas. We're one of the larger gas storage players uh, within Western Canada and move a lot of molecules, a lot of natural gas all the way across North America and want to leverage those relationships and move RNG, renewable natural gas through the same assets and into to similar markets. Slide seven um, gets, gets into the partnership, the quantum of capital. We are going to start one project at a time. It is a 50-50 partnership. So our first project is approximately 70 million of capital uh, where uh, we do plan to project finance and, and have seen term sheets and, and support where our equity check will be roughly $10 million. And then we would plan to roll the, the cash flow into project two and roll the cash flow of project one and two into project three, and then potentially into our Nebraska project and, and a few others, but one at a time uh, and excited to get our first project moving and, and really strengthen the customer and the contract profile with 20 year take the pays within uh, Tidewater Renewables. Other key pieces, I think just where are our other assets? So our other assets today um, are a combination of a gas storage asset where we are planning to start to move both RNG and, and a small amount of hydrogen at, at Brazil River. So 100% ownership in a gas storage reservoir. And then the majority of our cash flow today does come from Prince George where we're co-processing canola. So we're co-processing canola today through the existing refinery and making both renewable diesel and a small amount of sustainable aviation fuel. And again, the margins there have, have widened with diesel prices strengthening and then also the BCLCFS market strengthening as well. And as we get into it, you'll see that we've been forward selling BC low carbon fuel standard credits initially at 425, then 478, and more recently at 490 which has just been extremely helpful to our business and the related cash flow of our business with those carbon credits and BC low carbon fuel standard credit values uh, moving up. So we, we view three pillars to our business, definitely renewable diesel, where we would include sustainable aviation fuels, what we're producing today. And then we'll get into our large renewable diesel project. So that's most the, the most real mature market that 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 we have today and in, in material margins and driving great base business and, and huge growth in, in 100 million of EBITDA that comes online here in eight or so months. The hydrogen market, we'll, we'll speak just briefly on it today. It would probably be the most immature when we, we think about the three pillars of our business. Um, RNG, is, as Chase spoke to, definitely a mature market. Yeah, it's early innings, but there's economic offtakes. So for us to have our first RNG project, we're excited to bring bring that online and to have offtakes that are economic or hydrogen. There's been a lot of interest, but we have not yet seen a 15, 20 year offtake that's highly economic. So we're focusing most of our time these days on renewable diesel, sustainable aviation fuel, and RNG. We'll get into the renewable diesel project, but the other main message would be government support. We've seen an incredible amount of, of government support uh, We'll get into 100 plus million dollars from the BC government, but also the Alberta government. We have seen 20 million of support in the form of a grant on carbon capture, blue hydrogen within our parent company. Uh, so it's just a real eye opener to see the size of government support that we've seen. We do have the first renewable diesel facility in all of Canada with, with our build that's coming online here in eight months. And that's driven federal government discussions on large government-backed low interest rate loans, but but to date, it's all been grant capital in the form of credits and then also cash from, from uh, the Alberta provincial government. Um, in the interest of time, I think we may just jump right in here to our renewable diesel project. So a quick summary would be $235 million of capital. And then again, uh, back when we did our IPO, and we'll get into how, how do you value the credits in the grant, um, 100-ish million of grant credits and, and value there. But with the value of the credits moving from 375 at our IPO, it's a set number approximately 275,000 credits. So 275,000 credits in the form of a grant. In our IPO, we valued those at 375. That would get you to 100 million of, of grant capital. But what we've seen is those credit values have gone to 5 to 425, forward sold a significant tranche, then 478 and 490. Those have all been, been press released and significant move up in the value of the credit. So the value of that grant has actually grown from 100 to 125 million. And we continue to monetize 
people's credit. So they are effectively cash. So our net CapEx is in that $120 million range. And, and as the project comes online, uh, we can uh, jump to the economics here, here quickly, but it's diesel price plus BC LCFS credit values. And then the piece which we haven't been adding in is the Canadian Clean Fuel Standard Credit where we are in weekly discussions with the federal government, given we have the first renewable diesel facility in our co-processing canola today, uh, we will qualify for the Canadian Clean Fuel Standard credits as well. So that's an incremental value piece that we haven't included in our economics. Why haven't we included CFS credits? Uh, main reason just being we have a, a sub two year payout project of size and scale, and we didn't feel a need to continue to, to layer in value. Um, other key pieces on the project would be feedstock. Uh, feedstock used to be kind of the number one question we get. How are we securing feedstock? So we talked about a Rimrock partnership. That's about 1,500 barrels a day of tallow. So that's about 50% of our feedstock. Uh, and then six or so months ago, we acquired a used cooking oil collection business, which has heavily exceeded our expectations. It would be another driver of our own performance. As you look at our quarterly results, especially into Q2, uh, and and secured that entity and, and provided them capital to grow. So we own 100% of our used cooking oil collection business, and that continues to aggressively grow. And that entity is securing feedstock, I would say, at a cost of zero to fifty dollars a barrel, which which is obviously extremely helpful to our margins. The other key piece with our facility would be our pretreatment facility. So our capital cost, as you compare it to other renewable diesel facilities, is relatively high, $235 million gross capital on 3,000 barrels a day. Um, one of the key drivers there is our pretreatment facility, where uh, we will have as much flexibility as any renewable diesel plant uh, globally today, given the amount of capital, uh, the amount of metallurgy we put into that pretreatment facility so we can run used cooking oil. We can run hog grease, chicken grease, distillers, corn oil, and do not have to run high priced vegetable oils like a soybean oil or a canola oil. Uh, and we are co-processing canola today through the existing refinery. And, and we've also recently tested some tallow through our co-processing, which ran incredibly well. So overall, great to see material free cash flow from the business and, and real excited to get our renewable diesel project online here in eight months. I think most that know us know we have a pretty good track record of delivering those 220 type million dollar projects with our pipestone gas plant and, and the large pipeline we built to Tran Delta. So remain confident in our ability to deliver the project uh, online here in the next eight or so months. FCC co-processing, um, that project's at, at co ahead of schedule. We may potentially bring that online early and start to co-process product. With diesel prices high, gas will even have a little bit of renewable gasoline being high, um, and feedstock prices of late have, have also moved down. Um, as you look at our, our financial statements, you'll also see we have a large um, derivative asset on our balance sheet. That's because we hedged our, our feedstock prior to the IPO. So vegetable oil, soybean oil has moved up. That's the main marker for our feedstock. And we, we were quite fortunate to, to hedge. Uh, roughly 50% of our 2023 feedstock and 30 ish percent of our 2024 feedstock. And as a result, you'll see a large um, derivative asset and it's a result of, of hedging the cost of our feedstock. So th that also has, has turned out quite well for us. Capital projects, I think we hit, hit the big ones on renewable diesel, FCC co processing, and then also our RNG project. Um, I don't think we need to spend a, a lot of time there. Um, where else, I think maybe given we got a couple minutes left before we wrap up here, we'll just go down maybe to, to a few pieces, one being kind of ECL CFS credits. For those of you that are getting up to speed, how does the program work? Every year, the BC government requires carbon intensity to, to be reduced on fuels, be it diesel, gasoline, et cetera. Uh, they are working to include aviation fuel and, and marine fuel as well. Uh, and you'll see recently there in, in October of 2021, there was an incremental reduction in carbon intensity requirements on, on fuels. So for us, that just creates more demand for renewable diesel and also credits. Where you'll see this isn't completely up to date, but fairly close 
you'll see that we've seen credit values go from 270 ish in 2019 up to again close to $500 here of late. And we're probably will be one of the largest generators of BCL CFS credits and also CFS credits. So think of us as a producer of carbon credits, given the size of our renewable diesel facility, our existing canola coal processing, and our FCC coal process. I think this chart we'll just touch on and then we'll wrap up. And how do we compare California renewable diesel, the Oregon market through to BC? And the bigger question we get from our US investors is, how come California LCFS values are going down and BC continues to be strong and, and move up? The main driver would be California is the price setter and we view the credits as a stack of credits. So if you go kind of to the left-hand bar, you'll see California as you include the diesel price, which is the green block, plus the dark blue block, which is the LCFS value, plus the RIN, which is only in the US, plus the BTC. You get a stack of value of $889 a gallon, whereas in BC, we only have BC LCFS uh, credits today. So, so BC LCFS is essentially comprised of a RIN, a California LCFS, and a blender's tax credit. And it does make a, a lot of sense to us. We have seen that gap close. So BC still as a stack is less than California, and it's essentially the transportation differential. We do move product on rail cars, be it diesel, gasoline, renewable diesel, biodiesel between California, Oregon, Washington State, and BC. And it is essentially the transportation differential. So, so the main driver of why are BC LCFS credits moving up would be um, the, the catching up to the blender's tax credit uh, and the RIN and the California or Oregon LCFS component. But I think I'm running out of time, so happy to, to stop there and, and uh, pass it back to you, Deborah. Thank you so much, Joel.